Hello my friends, my name is Darren from RC Scum Models and today we have kind of a book review. This is also a small quest for some people, they've asked what type of reference material I use. Um, I use the internet like most people can do, but I like to have books as well as reference material. And it's good reading and it's stuff that I like to collect as well. So I'm going to go through my book collection. Uh, this one we're going to start with the Jaguar. This is from the book is published by Sam Publications. Um, the author is Andy Evans. This is this book is number twenty seven. There are several ranges. As I say, this is on the Jaguar. This is one of my reference material for Jaguar. There is a lot of color pictures, which is obviously what you're going to be working with. You have your index here. We have more, more uh, kind of index areas and a couple of pictures. So we have a nice massive picture here, a little bit of write up on the uh, Jaguar. It is a French designed aircraft. Obviously, uh, the British used it as well. Um, here's a French one. Um, this is the aircraft that I grew up seeing at air shows and stuff, and it was around. So it was the Jaguar. Tornado, the uh, Harrier jump jet and stuff with the aircraft that was around. Again, more more to write up. This is more write up and pictures. This is a ideal reference material for the French and um, early British with the wraparound camo. It's roughly the uh, Cold War era camouflage. We have another French one. There are slight differences in the English one and the French one um, different radars, different weapons um, the landing gear is a weird landing gear It's it, it reminds me of raptor claws and the way they just curl over I don't know if you understand what I mean but again we have great reference pictures what I like about these books as well towards the end it has kits and aftermarket products and stuff designed around the modeler and so these books are basically are designed for the model person to collect and use as reference material these are books are designed for that basis we have nice shot of engine detail nice shot there of the jet with full afterburner at night time again more uh, engine detail we have an aircraft carrier based one this is French. Uh, aircraft carrier based again with the uh, catch net. I think they called it. We have another French Navy one. We go on the RAF service now. It's a nice picture. So is that. It's a painting, I believe, actually. Might not be real. I have RAF markings. Again, nice pictures, a little bit of write up. This is great, great markings options. Having the, uh, that's a great picture as well. Uh, taking off the motorway there, that's a uh, sight you would want to see for sure. Black and white pictures, there's a uh, Harrier and the Jaguar together in the uh, wraparound camouflage, the uh, RAF green and the dark sea grey I believe. That's another nice one. We have the uh, winter camouflage, so if you do doing the Jaguar in the winter camouflage, I think the Jaguar in the winter camouflage looks really cool and aggressive and I think it looks much better in my opinion. A little bit of history on the camouflage, it's NATO. This is a uh, painted for when they were in it's Sweden. Well, no, no, uh, no, uh, Norway as well. Um, 
there's a black and white uh, spotted one for blending in that definitely blends in with the background that does we have more of the white one there's that spotted one again that definitely blends in with that background for sure reminds me of the um, fish that's got all the spots over it um, the flatfish I think we call it a place is it that blends in with the uh, coal and stuff it has that design we have then the, the uh, snow camouflage again that's a nice shot we go with RF markings again these ones have tiger mouths or shark mouth which is pretty cool they call it the bullseye 79 We have a little bit later version now in the uh, RF typical uh, grey. I think it's pretty standard grey colour that they use today. That one. So we have a nice picture here of the cockpit detail if you want to weather it up and stuff. So to mimic that kind of griminess you would probably want to use a like a grey wash of some sort to bring that to bring that effect out tail markings we go on to some tiger stripe tiger meat markings pretty cool we have the uh, desert camouflage which is the basic sand color then we have nose art we have some black ones see these are two seater trainers or two seater ones in general this one goes on to Jaguars in French service so we go to the French ones now we have these weapons I'm not sure what they are rockets air to air fuel fueling which is pretty cool these are more French. Their camouflage is pretty much similar to the RF with the green and brown, uh, the uh, sorry, dark green and grey wrap around. But they have the underside of light grey as well. Picture of the landing brake. There'll be more detail shots towards the end of the back of the book as well. They call it the walk around, which is really good for referencing. This is more history. We have more, this one here looks like Italian, if I'm not mistaken. I hope this one, sorry, is in India. My, mis my, my mistake. So we have some in Indian service. It's a grey one, and in India markings. Um, Jaguar for Ecuador. Is that if I'm getting that wrong? I do apologise. I do have difficulty with reading. That's why I pronounce things certain uh, certain ways or incorrectly. Even though it's in front of me, I still can't get it wrong because obviously I can't read it. Um, uh, we have a desert Jaguar. And looks pretty cool. We have one here in three stages of camouflage. Um, this country is who is the uh, green? Is that Egyptian markings? Jaguar at war now. So these are old black and white pictures. We have the Jaguar and Mirage there in desert camouflage. There's a French one. 
RAF markings, just like the Desert Babe camouflage type, where it's all uh, the one colour all over. It's a weird, strange colour. It's a uh, sandy colour, but a hint of pink in it. It all depends how the light reflects on it. So this is that colour all over. This is right from the Gulf War era, nine, from the 90s. There's some nasty weathering on the underside. Refueling. So then we go on to nose art on some of the aircraft. There's the uh, Jaguar with the Tornado, the Desert Babe one, one of them. We have these markings are for kills and stuff and missions and whatever. There's another the, uh, desert one again, nice shot. We go into a grey one now again, back to the grey. There's weathering at the back here. Weapon loadouts. Um, I couldn't tell you what they are unless I actually sat down and read the book. There's a nice shot over wherever, over RAF Jaguar on the uh, race mission over Beijing. No idea. Couldn't tell you. Um, we have more weapons. There's the grey one again. So now here we go on to colour profiles and a little bit of history on that individual colour profile aircraft. So like like I mentioned with the desert one was 1990s, 1991 area. Um, for the desert storm. We have the desert, uh, sorry, the snow camouflage, the grey, the wraparound camouflage with the shark mouth. We have the uh, one that looks like a French paint flag scheme. There's a blue one, the French one, RAF, typical greys with the nose art, no, so nose art, tail art, French desert, camouflage, desert, French. There's the India one. These ones are from India. This one, what I weren't too sure was, is some say French. What's this one here? So we have internal parts now this is what i'll mention about the walk around which is the detailed shots so you have this aircraft and this is everything on that one aircraft so this is what the, the uh, interior ejector seat looks like cockpit we have the cockpit seat side of the uh, cockpit walls and instrument dials landing gear the machine gun part of missile rails um it does tell you what the uh, pieces are at the side Engines, uh, landing lights and stuff. And we have this aircraft, the Jaguar A11Y or A21. Um, bear in mind these are highly weathered and quite beat up. These are display aircraft from museums and these are left outside so the wear aircraft is going to be nasty. We have this RAF um, from Cosford uh, Museum, which is the uh, blue, red and white scheme. Um, this is going to be strangely looked after, restored, the weather is still going to be a little bit there. So with museum pieces you've got to be careful because the aircraft can be mixed up with other aircraft to finish the restoration off or whatever. So it might not be accurate slightly just to get the aircraft finished. So you have to be careful when doing reference material from museums 
We have nice shots of the back of the aircraft, is that? Is that the tail? I am not sure. We have the side profiles. There's part of the cockpit. There's the tail. Um, one thing I do know with the landing gear and the inside terminals, they were still using the chrome mate yellow. Uh, fuel refueling probe, the landing gear. There's more nice decent shots of the landing gear. So here's more landing gear shots, which is pretty cool. The landing gear is not that badly weathered up, but again, this aircraft is inside, it's out of service now, so be careful how you want to do these ones. But it does give you a good rough idea. Again, that I think this is the front landing gear. Nice shots of the internals of the landing gear, like the chromate yellow I mentioned. Um, this is the other side. We have the part of the gun bay uh, cannon. Number four, what type of cannon is that? Doesn't say. But we have this one here, number six. It is a thousand pound bomb. Which is there. And. Yeah, just a thousand pound bomb. I thought that was a fuel tank, but it's not. We have these profiles, some weapons. This is number eight, a. The XW566. I couldn't tell you what that is, it's some kind of weapon. Like I say, if you know, comment in the comments what they are. Now we go on to profiles of people who have built kits. So this is from... Uh, this is Ravel's kit, 148 scale, uh, LRF capped. A little bit of write-up on the uh, guy that built the kit. And they go through little steps and problems they've had. So a little bit of write-up and it shows you kind of pictures of how they've done the kit uh, this one's Kitty Hawks kit this is one of 48 masking it all off for the uh, leading edge nice cockpit detail uh, is this the same aircraft? I believe so still Kitty Hawks one this one here again RAF Markings in the desert scheme, the pink spit fire, spit. Uh, this is the one Ravel kit 148. Um, talking about they having to fill certain areas with perfect putty and stuff, which is good stuff. I use that doing the um camouflage, sorry, not camouflage, the um desert one. Uh, does it actually say what colour it actually is? Can't see, doesn't say what colour they've actually used. It is nicely done. And we have another Ravel 148 kit, which is exactly the same, but done in slightly different desert markings and different techniques we have this one the ice cat or snow arctic cat which is pretty cool i like the jaguar in this scheme like i mentioned before this is 172nd scale from asagrawa Pretty nice. 
That's very nice indeed. And then we go on to these segments are from the very first Jaguar coming to service, like a GR1. Oops, sorry about that. Which we have a GR1 and 1A, and it tells you the main components, and then it goes on to the GR1A, and then it shows shows the uh, changes through the whole tire history of the aircraft. Until we get up to a Jaguar IM from India, and it shows you their changes. We have a Jaguar from India. This one's international. Um, GR threes, all the changes. And then we have uh, templates and tells you what all the parts are. Drawings, again. Be really careful how you want to use drawings because they can be highly inaccurate. It all depends on the artist that drew them. Cockpit detail drawings. Uh, when you when when pulling the ejector seat in normal flight, what's what's going to happen to the uh, pilot? And the gear drawings. So this section here is all about um, from the time of this book being released to now. There's going to be out more stuff, but at the time this book was printed, this is what was available for extra decals and stuff. So it goes on to the uh, decal type, its code, what scale, and what type of mark aircraft it's for for what type of Jaguar because there's obviously GL1 to GL3 whatever um, so we have 170 seconds 148 scales they're all made by uh, kit world these ones are these ones are made by high decals this one down here made by modern decals we have extra decals and again these goes on to this again this is kits are available at the time of this book being printed who was making kits so we had kits from airfix academy hobby boss did it hella hasugawa tallery or intellary how you want to pronounce it kitty hawk and ravel we have airwave uh, and eddard do their versions which should be their limited editions which i believe were it tells you here so Edward kit 148 scale Jaguar GR1 they used the airfix kit which is the uh, 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 Edward did another version special version with extras they used the Kitty Hawk version in 148 Edward did another one from Kitty Hawk Jaguar A Edward did 170 seconds GR1 they used the uh, Hasegawa kit, 72nd A, they use Hasegawa's, they did a 148 Jaguar A from Hala, they did a 148 scale Jaguar T, T2, that was from Kitty Hawk. We go on to aftermarket as available, from a time again from this book being released. Uh, Eddard do 72nd scale, stuff for the Hobby Boss one. Other manufacturers, Quick Boost do stuff. Um, they do one for the Kitty Hawk, and it shows you what they look like as well. I believe that's the Edward one for the one seventy second. That looks like an Edward photo at threat, and then it goes on to some of the uh, index of the uh, aircraft. We do have aircraft drawings again. Just be really careful of using those for whatever reason because they can be highly inaccurate shall i say so there you are so there's one book uh from as i say sand productions this is on the jaguar this is number 27 like comment subscribe and i'll catch you later